good morning, beautiful people, and welcome to our baking show. I have with me today a very special guest, Larissa from Eating Gilmore over on Instagram, is here with me today to help me make a very, very yummy pumpkin pop tarts. So that's what we're going to do today. I also pre made, which is another recipe from hers for season two. So basically, what Larissa is doing is she's working through Gilmore Girls. Uh, I'll let her introduce herself in a minute, but I will say, I'm going to dote on you for a minute here about how good this is and I made this and it is so good I have my coffee here but I'm going to be drinking this quite frequently so Larissa tell us about yourself hello I am Larissa the person behind the account eating Gilmore um, it is a cooking project where I recreate a dish or drink any food related item um, inspired by every episode of my favorite show Gilmore Girls I just wrapped up season five. Um, I guess by the time this is coming out, I'm yeah. still working on it right now, but with <laughs> all of just finished up season five um, and been doing this for almost two years now. Whoa. Wait, so what made you, were you just like watching it and were like, I could totally make that? Like what, what was the start of it? So I got my inspiration. So I have to go back a few months before I started um, in March, very end of March of 2020. So when things were really gotcha. pandemic heavy, everything was shutting down, going online. Um, I'm also a really big Harry Potter fan. Ah. So I found this online Harry Potter convention and there was this guy, his YouTube is uh, Brad Bakes in my Harry Potter kitchen. And he was doing a live cooking class or baking class for these cupcakes from Harry Potter. So he's actually oh, fun. cooking his way through the Harry Potter books. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. That would be really cool. Um, and then just, that was kind of in the back of my head for like a little bit. And then I would just kept thinking of Gilmore Girls because- There's so much Harry food. Potter, right, probably Harry Potter and Gilmore Girls are like the two series that have the most food featured. Oh. So, Kind of the wheel started turning a little bit that I could do that project, but with Gilmore Girls. But the idea of doing it publicly didn't really kind of come to fruition until probably that summer. My friend Michaela kept urging me to start either like a TikTok or a YouTube or a food blog. Oh, yeah. I was sharing all of my like pandemic cooking eating dinners on my personal Instagram story and she's like oh my gosh you're so good and I <laughs> didn't really think I was because I'm just like very anxious and I'm like oh, I'm not that good so it took basically from summer to November to kind of get over my anxiety in order to like <laughs> publicly share it and so that's kind of I guess the journey of how eating Gilmore was born oh well I feel like you're a pro at it now I feel like it's so good because you have all three now you have a blog that you post to, which has all the recipes. So I'll put the recipe for the one that we're going to bake here. And then for, well, this one also, the recipe for the, why can't I think of this? Apple cider comes with also a recipe for ice cream too. Yeah. So I'm going to put that in the description. I'll put all the links to your socials and everything as well there. So everybody can go follow you and find you. Um, okay. I am very excited. <laughs> I want to make this. Okay. What do I do? Perfect. All right, so yeah, we're making uh, pumpkin oh, yeah. pop tarts. And I guess I'll give a quick little backstory. I know we're like super excited to start baking, um, but a little uh, context of why we are doing pumpkin pop tarts, because those aren't actually featured on the show, even though pop tarts obviously are one of the most iconic dishes from the show. Um, but this is to kick off my Eating Gilmore Fall Challenge, where each week I'll have a different theme for you to create your own dishes inspired by Gilmore Girls and the theme. So every week on Friday, I'll share the theme. And so you can play along the whole week and every prompt you follow will be an entry into a big giveaway at the very end. So this will take place over the next eight weeks, but we are kicking off the first day of fall with our favorite fall treat. And we decided to make pumpkin pop tarts for that sounds so good I'll tell you what it smells so good in here I think it's the apple cider and then like all the spices it just reminds yes. me so much of fall very excited to follow along and see everybody tag so if you do make these tag Larissa tag myself so we can just see 
that you've made that and that gives you your entry into Larissa contest. Um, there will be something from a vintage joy thrown into that giveaway too for you as well. So lots of goodies, lots of fun fallness. And it's like the perfect time of year because obviously it's Gilmore girl season. Like, let's be honest. It's but, okay. All right. Are you ready, Joy? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> All right. So you have your mixing bowl in front of you, right? Yes. So the first thing we are going to add to it is our pumpkin puree. We're going to add one cup of that to our bowl. I'm just going to scoop that in. For everything that you've made on that, what would you say? I would say, what would you say is your favorite thing that you've made? And then what would you say is the most out of your comfort zone that you've made? Good question. So my favorite thing that I have made, um, and I know we talked a little bit about this before we started filming, but uh, the pretzel basket from season two, a tisket a tasket. So you can I love make that one. Fire picnic basket out of pretzel. And Did you add things into it too? Because you could like fill it with stuff yes. too. It was like that. That's awesome. Yeah. So I recreated her pretzel basket. We don't really get to see it. You, there's like a small quick shot of it, but there's not oh, a lot of scenes with it. Um, but yeah, I was able to recreate the pretzel basket surprisingly on the first try. Like that still that's amazing. It's like my proudest accomplishment probably in like my whole life. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I put that together and all of the pieces fit the handle, which I didn't even really measure somehow magically, fit. I don't know <laughs> how, I guess luck. The second part of your question, what I, um, was the most out of my comfort zone. So I kind of have, I guess, two answers for this. So one in terms of flavors and things like that. Um, so I used fresh mussels for season one when Suki goes on her oh, first yeah. date with Jackson and she's all paranoid that the mussels aren't fresh at the restaurant. I remember that, yeah. So that was a little kind of out of my comfort zone of that kind of seafood or whatever, even though I love seafood, but cooking- Also it at the like, beginning too. Like you're yeah, like season like really five. So, on, so I was yeah. Like, figuring out everything how to do this. Um, and then skill wise, the other thing that definitely took me out of my comfort zone, it, and it took me several attempts, was the graduation hat cake that Lorelai, mm -hmm. or that Suki makes for Lorelai's graduation. That took yeah. me five times to make. It looked great though, honestly. Like I remember that post. I was like, wow. Like the like, hat looked fully, it looked like a hat. Like I wouldn't, like I think I actually thought originally scrolling that you posted a hat. Like it was like that good. <laughs> yeah, it definitely took a while to get there, but I appreciate that it, it looks good. Um, but yeah, that took me five tries using a bunt pan to get that domed effect, which worked out because um, Suki fills it with uh, espresso beans. So I was able to fill the Smart. cake pretty easily. Um, the next thing we were gonna That's add funny. is one half a cup of brown sugar to our okay. mixing bowl. I like yeah. how you pick it. Like, do you, so you watch the show and you pick something from it. It's not always something that like they specifically make in the show. So like this was like mentioned in the show, but do you have like multiple items and then you're like, okay, I actually really want to make this one. For the most part, I've kind of mapped it out for the rest of the series. Just That's so awesome. that I can prepare because I do a lot of research before I start making a recipe. Um, but I usually will jot down notes of a couple different dishes that are mentioned and kind of narrow it down based on do I want to make it? Do I feel like I have the skills to make it? And then if oh, I'm yeah. still kind of torn, um, either I'll ask my sister because we live together and she's my official <laughs> sister. Nice, um, jealous. Or there's been a couple of times where I've done an Instagram poll and my mm. followers kind of vote on what I end up making. Oh, that's really fun. Okay, what do I add next? I have Okay, so now sugar. we're going to add in a fourth a cup of chopped nuts. So I'm adding pecans, but I believe you're doing walnuts. Is that correct? Yes, I have walnuts. Perfect. So now we're going to add in all of the spices. Okay. 
to give us that perfect fall flavor. If you are ever kind of making your own recipes or anything, always add salt when you are cooking with something sweet. That kind of goes against what we think, but it really helps to kind of balance that sweetness in any baking dish you're making. Nice. Okay, so is this, this is the yeah, fill. So our filling is set. We are good to go on that. So I'm going to set it aside for our next step. And then we're using both of these, correct? I have two. Yes. The, okay. Yes. So the, I, good to have that you have that up. So go ahead and take one of the sheets out. So what we're going to do is just kind of roll this out um, so just to thin it out a little bit. So I would say, I'm not going to like super measure this, but just at making it a few inches longer both on both sides, essentially. So we're going to keep that square shape. So now what we're going to do is essentially just trim off the edges. Um, so that way it's a nice and like uniform square, or I guess more of a rectangle, but that, that all the edges are uniform. And I use a pizza gotcha. cutter to do this just because it's easier, but you can absolutely just use a knife. What is something either from your childhood or from something that you've made from doing the Gilmore Girls Challenge that now says fall to you? <laughs> oh, that is a good question. I think growing up, um, I always made, and this is still one of my favorite things to make, is this uh, pumpkin chocolate chip bread. Ooh, yum. So that is kind of a fall staple for me. From the show, though, I would say probably those pumpkin pancakes that Luke makes. And then I also made an apple pie for the dance marathon episode. Ooh. Even yeah. though, I mean, it is, a, it, that episode does take place during fall, but they don't really talk too much about it being fall then. Yeah. But it also just kind of, I felt fit the vibe of the episode because it's like this all-American event and they're dressed yeah. in like the vintage 40s outfits and everything so okay okay what we're gonna do next is slice it horizontally right down the middle okay I have all right and then we are going to make six panels essentially six little rectangles so if you take if you have your pizza cutter you can just kind of divide this in thirds and then we're going to do it vertical cuts this time. On both of them? Yep. Okay. I am just going to transfer these over to my baking sheet. Oh, I have smart. it lined with a silicone mat, but if you have parchment paper, that works too. One of the first things that I think of in general for like the baking side of it is the one that I, I think I found. I mean, I think this is how I found you was the, the pretzel braid basket mm -hmm. that Suki makes that might be the that's definitely the first thing I think of that might be my one of my favorite things from the show I wish we had I mean maybe you dived farther into it than I did I just wish that we had seen more of what the food of the brace bridge dinner was because I think I would have been like I would really like that those are so I, what's weird because like I made a, quite a lot of dishes from Friday night dinners but they're not usually the things that I think of first. Yeah. When um, I'm thinking about dishes that I made or dishes that I have coming up. Just like filming and baking and stuff at the same time was kind of a learning curve when I first started was just remembering, oh, I have to film this as I add this or I, oh, I have to take a picture, or like a progress photo of this. It's so fun. I love watching people bake or like, I'll even watch, like, I'll watch, like, people clean their house. I'll watch people. I'm, like, I'm that age. I'm, like, ooh, what are you decorating? <laughs> <laughs> oh, me too. So, ooh. basically, what you're going to do is fill the center portion with the paste or with the Pop-Tart filling and leave probably about a half an inch to an inch of a border so that way we can seal the Pop-Tarts together. And you're going to do this for half of them because the other six we're going to sandwich on top. Which uh, boyfriend team are you on? <laughs> if we're talking about just the show, then I'm probably Logan because I liked seeing his character development. Mm -hmm. I was not a fan of him at the beginning because I was like, yeah. oh, okay, he's kind of 
a turd. But then the, I don't personally, I don't like what they did with him in A Year in a Life. Oh, I feel like I don't know if there's anyone who likes his character. Yeah, in a year in a life, which is so hard because we were so excited to have like Amy and Dan and be like, perfect, they can get the ending they wanted. And then I'm like, no, that's not the ending we wanted. <laughs> oh right, God. exactly. <gasps> which uh, team are you? My, so I have done a few different interviews for like podcasts and things. And so my like standard answer, and I really do believe this though, is that they all three were kind of right at the time. Mm. Like they all taught Rory really important life lessons or brought different parts of her personality or her character out. So I think that they were all necessary, but I don't think any of them were right for her long term. Yeah, I agree with that. And what's also, I just think, weird in general is that in like real, obviously this isn't real life, it's a TV <laughs> show, but like most people don't end up with who they dated in high school and in college. Like some people do. Yeah. But the, I feel like most people, whoever they marry is someone that they meet like a little bit later in life. So our only yep. options for Rory, at least in the first part, are just who she dates in college and in high school. And then even really in a year in the life, because I don't really count Paul. Cause... I know. I feel so bad for Paul. I'm like, team Paul deserved better. <laughs> like... I know. I just, I hated that they made his like whole storyline was just that everyone forgot about him. Like that just, yeah. I didn't like that as a, like a bit. <laughs> no, I didn't either. Um, but yeah, I think all of them were right for her in that stage of her life. But the, none of them were, like, good, healthy relationships that she should, like, pursue. Because even with Jess, I love Jess in the A Year in the Life, but I feel like they just work better as friends. Agreed. Than, yep. like, romantic partners. I don't know. They obviously have good chemistry, but I just feel like they work better as friends. Um, so you can either use a brush or your finger to just kind of dab a little bit around the border that we left. And then gotcha. you'll take another sheet and then kind of lay it over like a blanket and then we'll press it down perfect uh, but we can go ahead and basically take the other piece of pastry and lay it over essentially like a blanket and then just use your finger to kind of press down to seal it and do I put the egg wash over top at all or no yes you'll do it over the top as well I'm just adding the egg wash border to the other half and then I will seal those up as well. So we'll let oh. them bake for about 30 minutes and then let them cool. We don't have, they don't have to be like a hundred percent cold, um, but we do want them to be a little cold. So that way the icing doesn't completely melt into it. Yum. This is going to smell so good. I don't know why, but that's always something that like in my brain with any type of baking, I'm like, it's going to smell so good. <laughs> exactly. I'm the same way. Like, oh, it has to smell good. I'm very hopeful. <laughs> they look, it looks like I, you're a good teacher. I followed <laughs> along pretty Yay. well, I think. I think we're ready to pop these in the oven. Both have our ovens preheated to 350. So we're going to pop these in for 30 minutes and then minutes. we'll okay. see how they turn out. And with the movie magic that always happens, we are back. Yay. And these are out of the oven and they look beautiful. How yes. does your half smell? Mine smells so good right now. So good. I'm also not used to like the gluten pastry smell, if that makes sense. It like smells more doughy, which I'm down with. Like this is going to be my breakfast for quite a few days. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Same. All I'm right. Very excited. Now I think we're ready to start making the icing to go on top. It's one cup. Yes, one sugar? cup of powdered sugar. Okay. And then uh, how much of the whipping cream? Yeah, we're going to use two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream, oh. one tablespoon of maple syrup. And I love, I decided to make maple syrup or maple icing for the Pop-Tarts because I wanted to tie in a little bit of Luke's diner and the pancakes and everything. Oh, I love that half a teaspoon of vanilla extract it's 
pretty thick just so that way it'll show up on the pop tart. So I'm just spreading this on top. It doesn't Ooh, have I feel like to the consistency be is perfect. Know, super perfect because I feel like pop tarts usually have a, a kind of messy frosting on top. So for your favorite of like a cake icing, are you a buttercream? Are you a fondant? 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 <laughs> so I actually recently, this is something that I tried out um, when I made uh, the wedding cake for season five for Richard and Emily's wedding. I made um, a Swiss meringue buttercream Ooh. and it doesn't use powdered sugar. It, it's like you uh, whisk a bunch of egg whites with a little bit of like granulated sugar, but it uses a lot of butter. And oh. honestly, after tasting that, like I will never go back to American buttercream that just uses like cups and cups and cups of powdered sugar. Like, oh, oh my gosh. It's just, it tastes so much better. It's way easier to work with. Like, I feel like American buttercream with all the powdered sugar, like ends up getting really thin and it's hard to spread on a cake, but Oh, smart. The other one was a lot, um, I guess, stiffer, if, for lack of a better word. And so it just, like, honestly, were, it was so much easier to work with. Make sure I don't just throw my sprinkles everywhere. <laughs> so I know you mentioned um, making the cider and driving through and looking at all the falls. What is your, like, favorite fall activity? Ooh, good question. I think a goal of mine, which I haven't done yet, is to eventually go to like New England. So we have aspen trees here, which turn, which are really, really pretty. Uh -huh. But I really want to see like those like big, huge maples. Yeah. And I haven't had the opportunity to see those yet. So I think that would be like the goal is eventually to do that. Yeah. I love a pumpkin patch. I love a fall festival. Ooh, it's like- yeah very that's like color. really my vibe let me add these yeah, sprinkles last year so i um, yeah which is your favorite well i was gonna comment on the like new england area fall because last that's where fall, fan fest is right the gilmore girls fest for the first yeah time. Um, and it was in connecticut last year and so i got in later the first day so it like oh, the sun had already set when I was driving oh, from so airport pretty. to my Airbnb so I didn't get to see anything so it was really dark but then the next day I woke up and there were just like the most gorgeous fall trees so yeah everyone that goes is just like the nicest person ever everyone's so sweet oh that's so fun I like all the events like I feel like that's like a really great thing to do during fall like again eventually that's the goal Wow, this All looks right. so good. I don't good. know about you, but I am dying to try these. Yes, a hundred, hundred percent. <laughs> it looks, wow. It looks like we're pastry chefs, you know. I mean, we basically I mean, are. You are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to try it. I'm doing it. Oh my gosh, it feels like fall. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Like my poor little eyes got like a little teary. <laughs> <laughs> I know we need Sam Phillips to like play her law laws in the background <laughs> oh this has been so fun thank yeah, you so much for I'm taking the time to today together yeah this was amazing I will be posting all the pictures of this just for the rest of my life because I've never made pop cards <laughs> this successfully and they're so cute <laughs> Perfect. if you don't follow Larissa I'm gonna put her social media down there go follow her check her out join the contest Add your photos, get ready to see my photo. Is it, it'll be tomorrow, correct? When, yes. so check on our Instagrams tomorrow where you'll see the Pop-Tarts live. And this will probably be my prettiest entry. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, I'm sure it'll be a little iffy, but I had a cheat code this time. So this, this doesn't count. I had the master herself <laughs> helping me. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll talk to you later. All right, bye.